return of the sovereign champion back home to Ostrava, to the toughest city in the Republic. David Pink Panther Cosma. With five title defenses. <laughs> And in the sixth, he will face perhaps the most dangerous challenge ever. The man who sent Bararosh to the ground. Richard. Andrei Kalashnik. Representing Brazil. Kike Burrito. Octagon 37, December 3rd in Ostrava. Tickets available in the Ticket Portal Network. After half a year, Jeremy Kimball returns to the game. He recently triumphed in Ostrava in a heavyweight division against Thomas Namo, but this time he is up against German favorite Hatif Moel. Kimball has many more fights under his belt. Grizzly from Colorado has managed 18 wins and is a veteran of the UFC. He comes to Octagon for the fifth time in total, with a current record of three wins and one defeat. Kimball was able to end 13 fights before the final bell with his powerful KOs. Moel also finished most of his fights before the bell. The boss, as he is nicknamed, has 13 wins and only four defeats on his record. He will want to continue his eight-match win streak to nine wins in a row, and if he manages this, he becomes the title challenger because the Kimball versus Moel fight is a fight which determines who becomes the heavyweight title challenger of Octagon MMA. So here comes Hatif Boss Moel, this man mountain holding the Iranian flag on his shoulders, but by way of Cologne, Germany, fighting out of UFD Gym, one of the biggest and best gyms in Europe by far. Now this guy, Brad, you look at the skill set he brings, you look at the techniques he manages to pull off in the cage, but then you look at the record as well, started his career at four and four, then has put everything together, and since then he's on an eight fight win streak. That eight fight win streak has seen him undefeated since tw uh, 2018. Now he's good in the cage, he's technical, he's got the skills, but there's something inside of him. The coaches warn us about it. <laughs> we saw it at the end of the Keris and Leo fight uh, in his last bout, Octagon 33. We saw it at the stare down with Jeremy Kimball. He's hyper emotional. He can let that get the better of him. And that also, as well as uh, being dangerous to his opponent, is something which really drives him inside the cage. Yeah, it can be very dangerous to yourself when you get too emotionally uh, attached to a contest. It can, it can zap the energy away from you. The thing that makes him, uh, for me, so dangerous, he has that strong wrestling to, to, to always fall back on. When we're doing so, it really lets him let off his hands, and he has heavy, heavy hands. So he uses his wrestling to, to help set up his hands, and, and that's mean he has power in both of them. Yeah, you look at his record as went well, record as well. 12 and 4, 12 wins, 10 of those by finish, nine knockouts and one submission. Now, Brad, the submission is a verbal tap to strikes. So technically, he's finished every opponent with his hands or with kicks. Uh, in fact, he, his fight in December 21 uh, against Cornel Zapadka, that was a first round TKO finish with a knee to the body. So you just look at him, you see the way he's built, you see the way he throws those weapons, those limbs of him. His whatever connects is going to hurt, right, Brad? And it could be a blink and the fight is over. Yeah, exactly. Now, you got to really come up with a real... He's a, he's a tough one to crack. You have to come up with a real solid game plan. He's going to be a problem in this weight class. Inside the cage, one half of this heavyweight contest. This heavyweight contest with title implications. Let's welcome his opponent. Here he comes from America, Denver, Colorado, Jeremy the Grizzly Kimball. And I guess the nickname the Grizzly because he fights like a grizzly bear, pure and simple. 
His father has trained him, Ernie Kimball, since the age of eight. It is a family business, a business of delivering pain and destruction. And when you look at Jeremy Kimball's record, 18 wins, 14 of those by finish, 13 knockouts, one submission. He's held belts in other promotions, he's held titles. He's also the type of fighter like, don't judge the book by its cover because he is nimble in there. He has cardio, his strikes are great. He proved in the two Petrashek fights, one, he finished him within the round with a nice, tasty little uppercut that caught him coming inside. And the second, he used all of his weapons, all of his skill, his grappling, his striking, that durability, that cardio, to take the decision victory. For me, a fan favorite here at Octagon, without a doubt, but stepping into, onto German soil to take on the German monster that is Hatif Bosmoel. Uh, like you said, he's one of, one of those uh, heavyweights who are very nimble on his feet. He, he, for me, he's like a middleweight in a heavyweight sort of body. The way, the way he bounces around now. I want to think he used very well that he, is his leg kicks. He, the thing with his leg kicks, he's got to be careful with that. He has to attack the calf. Anything higher than the calf, he's going to be some, uh, subject to getting taken down. So he has to be aware of that here tonight. Yeah, we saw that you talk about those calf kicks. His last fight was against Thomas Namo at Octagon 32. Finished him in one round with those kicks to the legs. Here's the tail of the tape. Five years, the younger. Is Kimball, height and reach on the side of Hatif Bosmoel. And we are set and ready. The tip spot odds as well, tipping towards Moel. Let's get it underway. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. The next contest is a heavyweight bout that is scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Let me introduce you both fighters and we will start in the blue corner. He is 36 years old. Stands 192 centimeters tall, weighting and 115 and 4 kilos. Represent UFD gym and the coaches in this corner are Baba Gnezat, Ivan Hippolit and Ivan Diakovic. With a professional record of 16 fights, 12 wins, 8 in a row and 4 losses. Representing Neruda Cup team Chili Bats and fighting out of the Germany. Hatev, the boss, Moel. In the red corner, he is 31 years old, stands 183 centimeters tall, weight in at 115 kilo, represents Shingitai Slaughterhouse, and the coach in his corner is Ernest Kimball. With a professional record of 27 fights, 18 wins, and nine losses. Fighting out of USA, Jeremy Grizzly Kimba. Guys, you know this game. Follow all my instructions. If I say stop, you have to stop the fight. Go hard for, for win, but always fair. If you want to touch gloves, do that. Touch gloves and go back to your corner. Best of luck. They touch gloves. We are set to get underway here. The co-main event, this heavyweight spectacle that will see who will be the first to step in and vie for that vacant heavyweight title. Kimball, he is from Colorado Springs in the USA. Black shorts, red corner. Hatif Moel, white shorts, blue corner. Already looking to close the distance here. My, my name is Brian Lacey, Brad Pickett also calling the action. And off we go, Brad. Yeah, and also Kimbo with that little first exchange down with a good solid car kick as well. And just forced Moel to close this distance. This is where Moel wants this fight to take place. Yeah, without a doubt, that Iranian pedigree of uh, uh, wrestling. We've seen it before he imposed it in his fight. Octagon 33 against Kerison Rezedne Liel. Got the TKO at the end of the second round and that he's held belts in other promotions undefeated since 2018 and eight fight win streak but taking on Jeremy Kimball and this is the fight right here Brad this is the battle can Kimball escape this pressure avoid the takedown if he can get back into open water can he use those strikes we know he's used so well before in these fights yeah at the moment he's losing the head position you know, he needs to try and get Underneath, put, put, he needs to use his hand to push the head up easy, and then start blocking with the head. The way say the first form of defense is your head. And at the moment, he's losing that battle. Well, the referee already warned him about this position. If you want to keep it, 
show him something. Now you see Hatif working slowly down. Yeah, but Kimball doing the right thing of trying to soften him up. He needs to try and clear the knee line here. Good balance, eh? We said there on the, on the walkout how, how nimble Kimball is on his feet for, for heavyweight. And he's showing here. Yes, yeah, stays standing with that first attempt on that single leg coming from Hatif Boss Moel. And this is good by Kimball. This is kind of frustrating. Moel's not having all his own way. And, and by doing this, sometimes you can get inside the head of a fire. Yeah, he just needs to, for me, Kimball needs to be a little bit more active with his little chopping shots, punching Moel, trying to make him frustrated. But doing a great job of defending this takedown. Fighting, guys. Oh, 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 you heard that. That was, yeah. That was a cup. Cup shot there. Oof. You can hear the difference in the noise yeah, with that was, straight yeah. away. I wouldn't like Hatif Noel to do that to me. Oh, my goodness. Kimball looks ready. This will give the separation that you, he'll want, though, Brad. Yeah. Straight away, look, Moel looking to close that yeah. distance. He wants to get him caught up against the cage again. Kimball needs to use lateral movement, get into open water. That cage is a brick wall, which is stopping him right now. He had a golden opportunity to get in the middle of that cage, and he kind of started the fight when he's back to the cage. Oh, oh, nice left, nice right hand, sorry. Also, let's not forget that Kimball has the knockout power in, in his hands. Yeah, 13 KOs have come from that man. He's fought a light heavyweight, heavyweight. This is the interesting round to score. For me, Kimball's winning because he's defending this takedown and he's doing a bit of damage. Yes, he's getting pressed up against the cage, but Moel's not really doing much. He's just holding him there. He's not got one he's strike not progressed off the, the position, air. right? Yeah. Stop, guys. Stop. Stand up. Let's go to the middle. And, and even now, you see that Moel gets in the head. Let's see this calf kick. Yeah, let's see how long it takes Kimball to fire that right leg. You saw him fell the Viking Thomas Namo in less than a round with those vicious leg kicks. At the moment, is this getting pressed up again? He's, he's oh, yeah. getting pressed back. He needs to yeah, be that's careful. it. Yeah. That's it, right? Lateral movement. Morales doing a good job of pressing him back. Morales putting him where he wants him to do, where he wants him to be. Well, Kimball might be looking at. He's trying to counter Brad. Yeah. You can see that's part of the game plan. Oh, there's a leg kick. There's the outside yeah. calf kick and the shake of the head from Moel, which usually means yeah. it hurt, right? I also made him switch stance straight away. Moel, it's a crazy story with him as well. He came over here, ended up working the doors. And one of the nights he actually got stabbed. And another night he took two bullets to the legs and apparently they weren't able to remove the bullets. So in one of those legs, he is still carrying two bullets from a working the doors in Germany and frustration yeah, a little bit there he's yeah. looking at the referee he's well careful yeah again you know, say he switched starts he's recognized that leg kick he's trying to faint and work Jeremy Kimball back to this cage then watch him oh a nice shot from Kimball one two one two oh both swinging now Brad Kimball kind of, kind of reminds me of a bit of a Avoid Country Nelson. No, no, that, that kind of dynamite sort of right hand. Final seconds of this first round. Interesting, Brad. Really interesting. And like you said, arguably Kimball winning it because he's defended the takedown and he's caught. Yeah. I would actually score that to Kimbo for you know, doing good defense, but then also managed to get a few strikes off of himself. Uh, Moel, even though he had his opponent up against Cage, didn't really get to muster anything, really. And there was frustration as well. We talked about the emotions that Moel carries into the cage. Sometimes that can be a blessing. Sometimes it can be a curse, right? That frustration, you take your eye off the ball, yeah, you, you get emotional, yeah. you start blaming other things, like the referee for certain uh, situations. 
Yeah, you saw Simon comes down, he's getting getting told off by the referee. And, you know, getting, but Simon hey, Drew's been a bit of a firefight out at the end of that yeah. round from Moel. He stopped just looking for the clinch and started to try and throw some strikes. And when you're in there, Brad, you know this better than me for sure. Yeah, I know. You know, it's like you're throwing some strikes. And when you're in there, Brad, you know this better than me for sure. Do you start? Do you add up those things? Do you think, all oh, right, he's, I, you remember he caught me twice clean, or he's, 100%. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, like, I think it shows good fighting IQ if, if you're in a round and you know if you're winning or losing. You don't need to listen to your corner to find out if you're winning or losing a round. So you, if I get taken down, I, I, know, I know I need to get one back, or if it hits me with a couple of good shots, I need to get a couple back. So if it hits me with a good leg kick, I need to get one back. Oh, and again, he's talking to his man. Throwing these big haymakers, these heavy right hands. There you go, that's better. Oh, there we go. Now he's trying to use those strikes to set up the takedown. Kimball trying to work that underhook. This is going to be a big test here. Can he, Kimball, defend this? Oh, there's the first takedown for Hetif Moel. Yeah, Moel came out with a different sort of purpose in this fight, in this round. Threw some good shots, closed the distance. First time we've seen Kimball on his back. Yeah, and within 30 seconds of round number two. Now, can Kimball get back to his feet? Oh! oh. Now into side control. This is a position he loves to work from. Watch him try and isolate that right arm. Yeah. Oh, he's cut him open. There's a big cut. That's just going to be it. Hatif Noel, knees to the body. Big strikes. This could be it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Josh Noel takes the victory here in round number two. Unbelievable, Brad. Unbelievable stuff from Atif. A different demeanor. We talked about how that emotion can be a negative on some side. He used it as a positive, came out aggressive, used the strikes to work for the takedown. Got the takedown, caused damage. Can't see where that cut is. Oh, it's, it's right on the bridge of the nose. And also, I don't know what landed it, but that immediately opened like, like, like a tap and blood was just pouring out. Oof. Here we Come go. With, that's what we say. He came out with a different purpose and threw some good hands and good some low kicks. Got in, got his hands clasped and managed to wrestle his man down. And this was it. This was the start of the end right here. And you can see it's. Oh, yeah, there's the up kick. Whoosh. I don't see exactly what caused the damage to Kimball. My goodness. The referee gave him as many chances. And there you look. You look at the difference in those punches thrown. Significant punches. Pretty similar. Yeah. Nothing but respect after that. Ooh. Yeah, it's not a big cut, but it's right, right on, the, on the top of the in between It's a the bleeder, eyebrows, that's yeah. what we call it, right? A bleeder. So Hatif Moel with that victory, with that finish. That's a nine-fight win streak, Brad. That sees him as the contender, the first contender for the vacant heavyweight title. And that's a scary prospect, whoever is set to face him. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I don't see many people queuing up to fight this guy. And the emotions now have turned from anger to happiness. The corner even had to calm him down after that fight. But we are ready now. Let's make it official. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Fighters in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, know who's the winner. After one minute and four seconds of the second round by TKO, the winner coming from the blue corner, Hatef, the boss, Moel. Hatev, erstmal herzlichen Glückwunsch zu deinem zweiten Sieg. Frankfurt! Danke euch! Es ist super für dich gelaufen, dein zweiter Kampf bei Octagon und dein zweiter Sieg. Was war dein ursprünglicher Plan, als du hier reingekommen bist? Bald ich stehe hier am Tag dabei mit Babak, Ivan Ipolei, mein Manager Ivan. Ich 
Ich will etwas sagen auf Persisch. Im Burdemann, Balai Tamam Adum Iran. Und Balai Doktorai, du kapst ja auch nicht daran, du kapst ja auch nicht Iran daran mit Jangan. Zan, Zendigi, Azadi, Mato Amini. Also, Hatev, noch eine letzte Frage für dich. Du hast jetzt echt was hingelegt im Schwergewicht bei Octagon. Worauf hast du als nächstes Bock? Ich bin Nächte Champion bei Octagon. Oh, also, Titelkampf für Hatev Moel, was sagt ihr dazu? Das Ticket gehört mir. Ich bin Champ. Ich bin Boss. Also, he says, he's going to be the next Octagon Heavyweight Champion. The next thing for him is going to be the fight for the title. This is what he's aiming for. He doesn't care who he's going to fight. So this is Hatev, the boss, Moel. Herzlichen Glückwunsch, Hatev. Danke dir. There we have it. That is Hatif, the boss, Moel. That will be the one, one of the fighters that will vie for that vacant heavyweight title. And again, Brad, when you add up and you look at his skill set, we look at that performance, the way he upped it, a gear, two gears, three gears against Kimball to get that finish. A scary prospect, right? Gensel trying to do what Vermola couldn't finish. Big shot. He's down. He's down. That is your middleweight king. His name is Patrick Kinsell. Serena Patrick Kinsella. A magnificent rematch for which the Czechs and Slovaks have waited four years is finally here. Rivals. Champions. Ještě tady lítá nějaká malá, tlustá 77 s mým pásem. Mně přijde, že Karel tomu českým mám je poškodí. The light heavyweight title is not enough for Terminator. He wants to hold the middleweight title as well. Pás, co má půjčenej, to malý hobado, tak bych si ho vzal zpátky domů. Patrick Inspector Kinsel versus Carlos Terminator Vermola. 84 je jediný pravý šampion zde. December 30th, O2 Arena Prague. Tickets for sale on ticketportal.cz and ticketmaster.cz.